make plans. Right? What will you do tonight? Tomorrow morning, you'll go to school. Some of you will iron your shirt, your school uniform today. So tomorrow, you go to your school. You will do your homework because you are late. You know what I mean? You make plans. You make plans. But the Bible says, the Son of Man, referring to Jesus, is coming in a time you do not expect. What if he comes now? Hmm? <laughs> Some people, Jesus, come. <laughs> what if he came right now? You're not expecting. You are here listening to the message. You are focusing on the message. And you only expect the message. You don't expect nothing else. But what if he comes now? What if he comes tomorrow morning? Because when it's morning here, it's evening somewhere. When it's summer here, it is winter somewhere. Hmm? When you are having lunch here, some people are still sleeping because it's late where they are. So he's coming at a time you are not expecting. So here the Bible says, the Bible gives the following advice. Gird yourself. The, to gird yourself means to, to bind together. Back in those days, people, they wore robes. And most of the time, not even robes, clothes. They would take piece of cloth is put around their bodies and they had to bind it all together to be a decent clothing. So the Bible says, gird yourself meaning be ready to stand up and do whatever you have to do promptly. Have your, your lamp on. Have your lamp on. In those days they had no lights as we have today. Light, light posts. They had you to have lamp. And the lamp can only light a little bit ahead of you. Not much. Not much. So God says be ready. Be ready. Then he says like a man. Who is waiting for his master. He's waiting for his master. He's watching. So when the master knocks. He opens immediately the word of God says immediately do you know why your chance for salvation will not be waiting for you when God calls my name he will not call Fabian Fabian where are you he will call once he will call he will call your name once Mary and if that's you, he not call again. Is it, is it me or you? When he calls, you have to answer promptly. Here I am. No waiting. No doubt, no fear. You have to be ready. Perhaps he's calling you. Not to, be, not, not to go to the heavens now. But he's calling you to change. He's calling you now to change. He's calling your name for you to be a better person. He's calling your name to teach you that you have to let go of the grudge. You have to let go of the hard feelings. No matter how much, how much you are displeased with a family member. No matter how much grudge. You hold for a family member. When that person dies, you will cry. Mm. Yes or no? Yes. I'm not saying if, I'm saying when. Because death is not perhaps it will happen. It is an assurance. It's the only assurance of life. The only assurance of life is that life will come to an end. There's no greatest assurance than that. Perhaps God is calling you for you to surrender yourself to Him.
Because up to now, you have been playing games. Hmm? You are with one foot in the church, another foot in the world. You come to church, but you do all kinds of wrong things. Nobody knows you think. And then you say, nobody will judge. Well, I may not judge you. But you are judged. By your own conscience. By your own huh? conscience. There's no greater judge or worse judge than your own conscience. And believe you me, believe you me, one day, the Lamb of God, Jesus, will become the judge. God will become a judge. And if you don't have the, the Lord as your Lord to plead for you, to intercede for you, to show that his life on the cross was for you because you accepted his sacrifice on the cross by surrendering to him, by obeying him, you're going to be judged without a lawyer. And God is calling you today to change. Because you never know what tomorrow holds. When we say, when we talk about the son of man, Jesus coming back. Some people say, well, one day he will come to take the people, the church, collectively. Everyone who belongs to him at once. Yes, it will happen one day, but he can come to us in many ways. Pastor, what do you mean in a car crash? Jesus can come to you. You can die. You're in the plane. Anything can happen, friends. Anything can happen. Last week, a man was driving his truck. Not him, Fiji, though. A man was driving his truck, a helicopter. A helicopter. Do you know what are the odds for a helicopter to hit a truck? Do you know what are the odds? A helicopter hitting a, a truck. But that's what happened. The guy was driving his truck. The helicopter came and crashed. It doesn't happen. I've never heard of it before. But whoever died in that crash, for them Jesus came. Now, he came to take them or just to watch. You have to watch the things you do. In front of everybody, we behave our best. Yes? In front of people we don't know, we behave our best. I have to be composed. I cannot say a swear word huh? in front of everybody. I have to watch what I do because everybody is watching. And when nobody is watching, you do whatever you please. But that's the moment that defines who you are. To behave like everybody else in front of everybody else is normal. Does not guarantee your salvation. What guarantees your salvation is when you are by yourself and you have choices. And you choose to remain obedient to God. Listen. Listen. And you choose to remain obedient to God. It's easy to be faithful to your spouse when you are with your spouse. It's easy not to cheat on your wife when you are close to your wife. Now, when nobody is watching, and that woman who has been, you know, after you for so long, is tempting you, that's when you show whether you are faithful or unfaithful to your wife. Who is understanding what I mean? Hmm? That's when faithfulness is shown. When you have the occasion, you have the opportunity, and you choose not to do, because inside of you, there is a fear. You're not afraid of doing it, but there is a fear to God. That leads you to respect your wife. That leads you to respect your husband. That leads you to respect your faith. The opportunity is there. 
No one is that you tell. It's only you, God, and also the devil who is tempting you. But that's when you show who you are. God is telling you, God is telling you, watch. Because when he knocks, hmm? when he knocks, we have to open promptly.